So I was cleaning out the interior of this wagon today, trying to remove some more of the rat poo, and um, I got the glove box open, and it's full of paperwork, registration papers mostly. I couldn't help but notice there's a piece of sticker stuck to the inside of the glove box lid that says new motor 320570 kilometers. Now this car has done 347,000 kilometers. So does that mean 25,000 kilometers ago this car got that 351 motor? Does that mean that 351 motor is not worn out? Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Missile Industries XC GS Wagon Project. Yes, I said that out loud because the more I look at this wagon, the less keen I am to just trash it for parts and get rid of it. So in this episode, I'm going to address all the missing parts on the front of this engine with the intention of getting it together so I can put it back into this wagon. It might seem like folly when I say it out loud, but I have the old Bosch distributor from my XC sedan and I have the 750 CFM Holly from the XC as well because as it turns out after all the fluffing around I spent trying to figure out why I kept stalling, neither the distributor or the carburetor were at fault and it turned out to be an under dash voltage issue. So that means my car and my distributor are still going to be good. So I've ordered a whole bunch of parts on eBay and once they all arrive I'll be able to mock all of this up and hopefully get it back into the car and have a red hot go at getting it to run. I even have a can of Ford light blue engine enamel that I have literally been holding on to for over a decade now, so hopefully it still works. So it's the evening here at Missile Industry Headquarters, and as you can tell by the blue colour of this 351 4MA crank Cleveland, I've painted the motor. I degreased it and then wire brushed the rest of the crud off. And threw on that can of Ford light blue paint I've been hoarding for years. This is the result. Obviously the orange rocker covers aren't staying because I'm going to resurrect the old 351 rocker covers from my sedan, which I replaced with shiny rust-free versions. But the 351 rocker covers with a little bit of rust will be perfect for this crusty motor from this crusty car. Now would be a good time to use these uh, rocker cover gaskets I never used with the other car. Better rock. So now that I've preed the engine up and had the sump off and repainted everything, I thought to myself, should put some fresh oil into this engine and uh, chuck a filter on it but it makes more sense to put some fresh oil into this car chuck a filter on this car because it's about a year and a half overdue for an oil change since it doesn't really do much so I'll reuse that oil and that filter and this engine I know nothing about it's got to be an improvement over the engine oil that was 17 years old that was in it. Yes, this will be fine. Hello. A week has passed since I last did anything with this motor and... Posty has been very busy dropping stuff off at my house all week so that I can uh, complete the mock-up of this motor in anticipation of installing it into this car in the distant, distant future. But first things first, let's go over what has been delivered. Now, I did attempt to put a Holly Carby 
on this manifold last weekend but unbeknownst to me these uh, dual plane 77 Cleveland manifolds are actually set up specifically for a thermo quad carburetor now I didn't know that because every other Cleveland car I've ever had has always had a holly on it and I've never had to deal with any of that stuff so I started looking for uh, dual plane manifolds that would suit a holly and they were expensive and uh, even the second hand ones people treated them like gold and they didn't want to part with them for the money that I was prepared to pay so I started looking for adapter kits and adapter kits are readily available look at this bad boy this should hopefully do what I need it to do so I can fit my spare holly onto this spare motor and I've also got a new alloy water pump to replace that crusty horrendous one that's currently on the front of this motor with all its rusted out fittings and uh, it's in a terrible state and I didn't want to salvage it and I just wanted to replace it it still feels alright but yuck pretty sure that's cast iron too I've also got what looks to me like a four rib pulley which was I've been told is for an air and steer 351 Cleveland car and I've got the bolt kit to put it on and I've got the kit to mount the alternator back on the car now the car is still missing a heap of bolts to fit bits and bobs on and I still have the water pump pulley on its way but for the time being I'll do what I can today and uh, get this motor closer to getting put back in the car how good does this red line manifold adapter look? Look at that. That's nice. So I think I know why the uh, Fords went to thermoquad carbies and manifolds in 77. Because of emissions regulations. Judging by all of this nonsense here. In its earliest form. So let's just uh, shit can all that. Now I don't imagine this is going to promote the most... Uh, healthy flow characteristics given there's all these blunt edges directly underneath the carb but this is just for a startup not a drag strip dun, dun, dun. come on go on there we go Let's see what horrors lie underneath this it's not very exciting Smash a gasket onto the new pump and stick it on. Seems this harmonic ballast has got some toy marks on it, much the same as my power bond one on the sedan. I wonder if this is an aftermarket harmonic balancer. Given how corroded the uh, timing cover is on this motor, I've added some RTV to the underside of this gasket before I chuck it on. I'd never really bother using RTV in these applications with a gasket in place, but uh, I'm going to hedge my bets. This will help. It's starting to look more like an engine. I'm going to have to figure out what belts I need all over again. After a day of garage tedium, I'm off to go and buy an XC armrest off a guy called Paul. Hopefully, it looks like this one. Right, I'm back from my Facebook excursion with my fourth armrest. Now, it's kind of grubby, but. That looks a lot like doe skin to me. $40 well spent and a nice diversion away from the painful job of finding what thread pitches I need to replace all the bolts on this motor. It's a new day and I've been to the bolt shop and spent $34 on a whole bunch of Imperial bolts to go on this Cleveland motor. Good times. At last my water pump pulley has turned up. And it's done. So months ago, when I did a power steering conversion on my sedan, I went through quite a palaver trying to find belts that would fit. But I've discovered that in this wagon, the owner actually left all of his old belts in the boot for spares. How cool is that? So, hopefully these fit. My theory about the belts turned out to be right. Three belts, three different pulley arrangements to run, alternator, 
air conditioning, power steering, water pump, everything works. Nothing overlaps or touches or binds or anything. I have clearance on all the pulleys. I did have to get a tensioner pulley kit. I only have one more pulley to go. It goes in there somewhere. I have put the uh, 302 manifolds back on too <laughs> because I have them. And I was contemplating any extractors for it, but that's 500 bucks I don't want to spend right now. So I'll keep this as poverty as possible and just reinstall it with the stock cast manifolds on it. Only for a fire apart for all. That's all I'm doing here. Think of this as a mock-up for my air conditioning conversion on the other car. Or maybe just to get this car running. Nailed it! Summary time for what I suspect is episode 4 of my crusty XC wagon project. Now, as you can see, the engine has uh, all of its stuff bolted back onto it. Now, this probably would have been a pretty unviable prospect if I had to find a new distributor, a carby, and all those pulleys and whatnot, because as it stands, I'm about $900 into this just buying pulleys, brackets, and water pump, and the adapter for the carby, so this hasn't been a cheap exercise, but at least I had the power steering pump, the aircon compressor, and the alternator still with the car, so that saved me quite a few headaches not to mention all the belts still being in the boot of the car for me to just redeploy back onto this motor. So that wraps this episode up. The motor has been transformed with a bit of paint that I had lying around and obviously all the other bits and bobs that I had lying around plus a swag of eBay goodies that I pretty much just went buy it now on two weeks ago and then waited patiently for it all to arrive. And I've got to say, I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out because I didn't really know how it was all going to go together and I basically bought everything on eBay from the description saying it was an air and steer car. And um, it looks like it's all worked because everything lines up, which is a great result. kids into helping me clean the windows of the car today and scrape all the paint over spray off them that was everywhere boy did they whinge but sure does look nice now all oh, the window glass is much much cleaner I even gave the front window a bit of a going over I'm starting to feel a bit optimistic about this project <laughs>